Hey guys, I know a fair few people were having trouble with my upload vulnerabilities room on Try Hack Me, specifically the last challenge, Duel. So this video will be going through that. Uh, as you can see, I already have a copy of the machine up and running, um, and I have gone through the getting started steps here. Um, before we actually begin, I will just download a copy of the word list because we'll need it in a second and we'll move that from downloads to here and just for clarity, we'll do that. There we go, that should be easier to read. Watch your eyes. Okay, so on the actual website itself, before we get into any kind of web app testing on this, let's just start by running a GoBuster scan on the web route, so http jewel.uploadfounds.tryhackme. We'll just use the standard uh, derb big.txt because we're just looking for uh, directories and the big, uh, big word list is ironically not that big. Uh, and we will output, actually we'll up the threads on this, because uh, I know the server can handle it, and we'll output this to go buster root big. We'll just let that run in the background. It's already finding stuff there. Okay, so, um, with that done, or with that running in the background, let's have, or start by looking at the source code for the website. So, we can see here that most of the things it's including are in an assets directory. Now this means that it's, this is probably uh, the location for the, the fixed content, so it's unlikely to be of too much use to us. Um, if we go back to the main web page and then have a look at Wappalizer, we can see here that it's identified the, that the uh, web server is written in node.js, which is good to know because our PHP web shell will not work here, our PHP reverse shell will not work here. Uh, it's also identified that we have uh, the things written in Express, and indeed, if we were to go to Burp and get this page, and if we were just to intercept this, the response to this, we can see that it is it's X powered by Express, which indicates that the Express uh, Node Node.js Express framework is being used here. Um. Okay, let's go back here. We can see that the GoBuster scan has finished. So we have a few directories, we've got a few pages. So we have content, we have an admin page, which looks very useful. We have the assets page, uh, directory that we already identified, and we have two more directories called content and modules. Um, now content looks like it might be where, where we're storing things like the background images, which we can confirm in just a second, and modules will be useful at or later on. So again, if we just have a look, if Control shift i to open up the source code, we see here in the backgrounds, over here in the CSS, we can see here that the URL for this file is content lkq.jpg. Um, okay, so we know that the background images are going up into the content directory. So let's just have a look and see if we can find all of them and make sure that there aren't some that aren't uh, covered there. So again, we'll just leave this running in the background. Uh, we're going to call this content default. We'll leave the thread count at 250. In this case, we will use the provided upload villains word list and we'll set it going on the content directory. And we'll just leave this running in the background. Okay, so while that's going, let's have a look at that admin page. Oh. We'll just turn the intercept off first. There we go. So we can see here that the admin page is letting us activate modules in the forward slash modules directory. So that's again directly underneath the web route. We found it a second ago. Um, so this looks to be where we're going to be executing our shell as Node.js will not allow us to just navigate to it as a PHP page would. So yeah, so we know how to activate now, okay. Let's try uploading a shell. Now we know it's Node.js, so we'll go to payloads all the things and go for Node.js. We can see here that there is 
one right here for us. We'll, oh, turns out I forgot here that we're obviously looking for JPEG files. So, because that's what we saw with the background a second ago. So we'll just do that. And while that's running, we will go for then shell.js. We'll paste that in, change the port in the slowest Vim user way possible, uh, 443, and 10.11.12.223. That looks about right. Okay, so let's try uploading that as it is. Okay, you can see here that it is asking us explicitly for JPEG images. So we'll change this to all files. Now that indicates that there will likely be a client side filter here, but we've kind of guessed that already. So we're trying to upload our shell.js and it's telling us that this is an invalid file type. Well, that's not unexpected. So let's see if there actually is uh, a client-side filter here. So in Burp Suite, we'll turn our intercept on. Uh, I know a lot of people were struggling with uh, intercepting uh, the JavaScript files before. So we'll have a look here. This is covered in the room, but we'll just cover it very quickly here. I've already done it for this instance of Burp Suite, but here in the intercept client requests, we go to the first line, edit. Here, there would be one of these, so previously there should have been uh, JS, like so. I have removed that, so you take that out, click OK. Then the other important thing, or the other thing that's catching people out, is if your web browser already has the JavaScript file cached or stored in its memory, it will not be displayed here. It'll give you a 304 not changed, not modified re uh, response. So um, it's important that when you're refreshing the page, you use Control F5 rather than just F5. Control F5 will clear your cache. So do that. We don't need the main page, so we'll just forward that. We don't need jQuery, so forward that. We don't need jQuery color. That looks interesting. Upload.js, so we'll go do intercept the response to this request. Forward that. We don't need backgrounds, that's presumably just changing the background. Uh, let's try hack me stuff. Okay, so here's a response. So this is the contents of upload.js, and we can see here that there are three client side filters for file size the magic number, and the file extension. So let's just yoink him out of there. Who needs filters? Uh, and this stuff can just go away. Okay, so we have now theoretically removed our filter. Let's try uploading it again. So once again, it's just giving us the option to do JPEG images, but if we change that to all files and then go to shell.js, and we've still got an invalid file type. Well, that's kind of to be expected. They wouldn't just give us a client-side filter, right? So there is a server-side filter going on here. Um, uh, the only filter that's covered in that room, which is not or was not in that client-side filter, is a mime type. So we can kind of guess that that's likely to be what's here. So let's change our shell.js to shell.jpg and then we'll try uploading that. Okay, it's now showing up straight away under the JPEG images, so try uploading shell.jpg and we can see now that our file has been successfully uploaded. Okay, let's now go back and run that same go... Oh interesting. Oh, of course, we're in a different window. There we go. So you can see that that um, the original GoBuster scan worked. We have five things here, five images here. So let's run the same scan again and see if we now have six. 
Uh, as a side note, there should actually only be four there. Uh, this machine has already been used once. So uh, well, we're just seeing which image or which new file has now appeared in that directory that was not in there before. So something that's not AHN, ABH, LKQ, SAD or UAD. And already we can see that a file called lht.jpg was not in that original list. So this is likely to be our file, but we'll just let that finish and see what's happening. Um, and that should be all of them, but we're at 94%, so we'll just leave that running. And there we go. So we now have six files where previously there were five. So now that we know where our file is, the fact that it has uploaded, we can, and we can confirm this, so lht.jpg, so if we go to content, lht.jpg, and it contains errors. Well, that just tells us it's not actually a JPEG file, and of course it isn't, it's a text file, but it won't execute just now because no JS. So let's go back, and we'll clear that, and set up a listener. So lvmp443, we will go to that admin page that was kindly provided. Now, both the modules directory and the content directory are straight beneath the web root. So theoretically, if we go back one directory to content and then go into content, lht.jpg, we have our listener set up. If we execute that, go here and wait, we should, in theory, get a connection. So, who am I? ID. Usually we'd use fconfig, but I happen to know that this is a Docker container which does not have those. So, we'll use hostname, attack capital I to show our IP address, and then cat. No, no we won't. We'll do that to show flag dot txt has 38 characters in it. So, that should now be us finished with Jewel from the Upload Vulnerabilities room. Hopefully that was informative and has helped any of you who were still struggling with the challenge in this room.